part. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The question is that clauses one to three stand part. Is some member seeking the call? Mr. Charles Chevelle. Mr. Chairman, I foreshadowed in my uh, earlier contributions that I thought this bill um, probably would merit uh, some different uh, titling than the one that it has managed to uh, end up with. First of all, uh, this bill is clearly part of uh, the Minister of Justice's charm offensive with certain parts of the legal profession, parts of her attempt to soften her image uh, as uh, the crusher of cars and the enactor of three strikes legislation. So, sir, I'd like to propose that we consider uh, another title for this legislation. Perhaps it's the, the softening of Crusher's image with the senior bar bill, because clearly that's going to be uh, one of the potential effects of the legislation. As Dr Blue said, the Bar Association really wants this legislation to be passed. Well, of course they do, because it means that... Uh, it will remedy the, the drought that has occurred for five years because Chris Finlayson has refused to appoint senior counsel under the existing legislation. And so what's happened to our profession? Uh, they've had no senior appointments made while all the Australian states and territories uh, have had uh, senior counsel appointments made every year in them. And we should remember, sir, uh, as we think about perhaps another alternative title for this bill, the uh, Luck of the Australians Bill, that uh, all those senior counsel appointed in Australian states and territories are entitled to practice in New Zealand. And what the Attorney General has done by failing to make appointments under the legislation that he's entitled to make uh, for the last four or five years in New Zealand is he's put those Australian senior counsel at a massive competitive advantage against the leaders of our profession who've had to sit around waiting for action to be taken around what status or rank would be accorded to senior New Zealand lawyers. And while they've waited without any sort of title or rank being conferred upon them, guess what's happened to those Australian lawyers? Well, as a result of the Canterbury earthquake, They've been the ones who the big insurance companies have commissioned to uh, write the major opinions on liability over the earthquake. They're the ones who have been looked to to give opinions on whether or not litigation should occur. And they've been the ones who've sat there thinking, hmm, I wonder whether it's worth uh, going and uh, litigating this case or that case in the New Zealand Court of Appeal or the Supreme Court, as they're entitled to do. So that, would well, that could well be another alternative title. Of course, another, yet another title uh, could be the uh, Chris Finless and I'm going to see myself appointed a QC come hook or by crook bill, because it seems to me that that is a motivation that we cannot ignore here. Uh, we know that the attorney was uh, very sad when Michael Cullen uh, took advice and then acted on it that he couldn't really in good faith give him the appointment of QC at the time because he really didn't qualify. Uh, and so here we see uh, a tradition in the National Party being fulfilled. I mentioned earlier that Paul East had himself appointed as a QC uh, in the 1990s when he was the Attorney General. Now at least in that case, sir, uh, Paul East was heading uh, the government legal team he had, uh, I think, David. Co uh, he had John McGrath, the Solicitor General at the time, as his junior, uh, in the uh, litigation in the International Court of Justice, which was designed to seek to prevent France from having resumed underground nuclear testing at Mororoa. And it was thought that it was appropriate that the New Zealand legal team uh, should be headed by uh, the most senior rank of lawyer available. Uh, clearly, when the Solicitor General himself, a Queen's Counsel, uh, was going to be the junior in the case, the Attorney General, who outranks the Solicitor General in the order of precedence, could hardly appear without uh, some sort of rank uh, clothing him. And so it's understandable uh, how Mr East came to have himself appointed as a QC uh, in those circumstances. It remains to be seen whether uh, Mr Finlayson's uh, lust for status will be clothed in similarly respectable uh, garb or whether it will simply end up being a more naked grab for such status. But these are all titles, sir, that would be equally apt 
for this legislation because they do describe the reality of the situation. Uh, given what I said earlier about what the effect of this bill will be, another fair title for it would be the let's keep diversity out of the senior ranks, Mr Chairman, uh, Charles Chevelle. of our legal profession bill because that undoubtedly will be the effect of this legislation. I said earlier that for a long time now, uh, women graduates from our law schools have been, uh, I think, over 50% of the, uh, of the uptake every year. And yet, uh, survey after survey of the profession shows uh, that very, very few women manage to get to the absolute top of the bar. We do have a few, and they're outstanding. And it's wonderful uh, to be able to acknowledge that and to work with those people, as my uh, colleague Andrew Little pointed out. And I say that without any uh, hint, I hope, of sounding patronising. They are amongst the best lawyers in the country. But there are fewer of them, and there's a reason for that. And it's the reason that I explained earlier. It's much harder to have to work as an independent contractor than it is to be able to pull one's risk if one wants to have a family and work and requiring appointments to be made from the bar only does exactly that. It says to those who want to found a family or who want to do something else with their life other than just work uh, every hour God gave, uh, that if they want to do that, they can, but they've got to find a way to pay for it themselves. So saying uh, you cannot be a QC uh, if you want to be in a firm or you want to find some other way uh, to support yourself even though you might be the most brilliant legal practitioner that this country has ever produced, is what this bill will do. And it will inevitably have an effect on lessening the diversity at the most senior levels of our bar. And that, to me, is one of the most lamentable things about this retrograde step uh, that this parliament is taking today. But, sir, perhaps the... Uh, best way that we could describe this legislation, given the voting down of my supplementary order paper earlier, and I thank uh, the other parties who supported it, including New Zealand First and the Mana Party, I've already acknowledged the Greens, and of course my Labour colleagues. Uh, the saddest thing about getting rid of the transparency that currently exists in the appointment process uh, for uh, now Senior Council, soon to be Queen's Council, is this. Nobody really knows how QCs become QCs. Uh, it's a murky process. It's a process where uh, who you know matters much more than who you are. And, sir, I want to relate one story about this, but before I do, I'm going to propose that a better title for this legislation would be the It's Not what you know, but who you know, Bill. Because that's what we're doing here. Sir, I have a, a friend who's a, a very, very able uh, lawyer. He practices at the bar in Auckland, or he did until a couple of years ago when he retired. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that he uh, would have made a very fine senior counsel or QC. And a friend of mine who sits on the High Court agrees uh, that judge took up uh, this man's cause at the time of the first, uh, sorry, of, of the last appointments round for Queen's Council, uh, and was told that because uh, this candidate had not been, uh, it, was, it was not well known to the judges who sit around in the common room in the High Court in Auckland, that really he needed to uh, get a bit better known, put his name about maybe get a bit more active in the Auckland District Law Society, perhaps join the golf club and play a bit more golf with the lawyers concerned. Well, sir, this is the reality of what we're condemning a lot of our practitioners to. Uh, we are saying, look, uh, the National Party thinks the old boys' network works best. Uh, they want to see more of their own appointed to the most senior ranks. Uh, of our lawyers, and they have gone about this by ensuring that we are going back, that we are voting down the retention of an appropriately transparent process. In every other area of our society, we are being transparent, and yet in the one area that causes the most grief and the most mystery to ordinary New Zealanders, how do you get a lawyer that you are concerned about 
disciplined or, or held to account? How do you get a judge in that situation held to account? We're going backwards. We're saying uh, in order to become the most respected and senior type of lawyer in this country, uh, well, it's going back to hocus pocus. And that's the saddest thing about this legislation, Mr Chairman. Call uh, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, again, uh, I express... Uh